Welcome to La Mia Italy, a series of short videos about Italy by a Brit with Italian blood who's lived in Britain and Italy and loves them both. Why are there still fascist monuments in Italy? This is a difficult question to answer without offending people, but I'm going to have a go. When Black Lives Matter protests resulted in the pulling down of statues, in Italy the focus was on figures like Indro Montanelli, who were accused of racism, but I didn't see reports of people tearing down fascist monuments, even though many are in plain sight. And I'm not talking about things like the so-called Nazi monument in London, the gravestone of the dog of the German ambassador during the 1930s, which, let's face it, is not obviously Nazi, and despite all that is behind a protective cover. Compare Giro's gravestone to something like this, the so-called Stili or Obelisk of Mussolini in the Foro Italico sports complex in Rome, home to the Italian Open Tennis and next to the Stadio Olimpico. Not only is it fascist in style, it even has Mussolini Dux, or Duce, written on it. And this is just one of many examples, as we'll see shortly. This is very different to other countries, notably Germany, who have removed any physical reference to the Nazis. One reason is that Italy wasn't physically destroyed in the same way as much of Germany was by the end of the Second World War. Fascist buildings such as the courts of Milan, base of the clean hands magistrates who took on corruption in the 1990s, or the post office in Palermo survived the war, as did numerous other buildings, monuments and inscriptions. What were the Italians supposed to do to knock them all down after the war? Slightly more shakily, the post-war Italian government carried on with Mussolini's incomplete plans for the Esposizione Universale Roma, which was supposed to take place in 1942. This gave us the rather wonderful Eu area to the southwest of Rome. It's hard to be completely comfortable with its cultural references, but equally, I would be uncomfortable without it. The Palazzo della Civiltà is even the headquarters of the fashion brand Fendi, who evidently have no concerns with any cultural baggage. I can't help noticing legacies of fascism when walking around in Italy. Whether it's references to the fascist numbering of the years, counting from the start of fascist rule, suspicious looking eagles, or the fascio symbol, which dates back to ancient Rome, visible here on this palazzo in Milan. By the way, the fascio crops up in other places too. Here it is in the US Congress, obviously in its capacity as a symbol of classical Rome and predating fascism by a century, so with a different meaning, but physically the same. It's been a very different story in Germany, where the Nazi symbols were removed as part of a program of denazification. In this case, the eagle remains, but the swastika has been defaced. I think another important difference between post-war Italy and Germany is that the Italians got the chance to show their contempt for fascism and Mussolini by hanging his body upside down in Piazzale Loreto in Milan. In contrast, Hitler and the leading Nazis largely vanished, probably killing themselves, but always leaving that nagging doubt that perhaps, just perhaps, they melted back into society. This picture is an American one of a disguised Hitler. There's also the Catholic trope of forgiveness, that notwithstanding what leading fascists did in this life, ultimately they are God's souls who may have left the path of the righteous, but are deserving of mercy like any other sinner. There's something strangely moving about this cross to Mussolini, near the place he was killed. So let's go back to Indro Montanelli, one of the greats of Italian journalism, who was imprisoned in the Second World War for his resistance activities. The reason his statue appears to have been attacked was when covering Mussolini's war in Ethiopia, he had an inappropriate relationship with a young Eritrean girl. However, the reason he was in Ethiopia in the first place was covering the fascist invasion in which poison gas was used against Africans in a way which Mussolini never did and probably would never have done against Europeans. And yet I don't see protests against the Palermo post office, the court of Milan, or even the Mussolini obelisk. Italy has largely moved on from those years and the 20 years of fascism, the Ventennio, while not forgotten, has been absorbed and allowed to keep its place in history. Personally, I don't believe the existence of these physical traces of fascism mean that Italy is somehow particularly vulnerable to a resurgence of fascism. And in fact, what best sums up Italy's way of dealing with its fascist past to me is that Mussolini's son, Romano, was able to become a popular jazz musician, not punishing him for the acts of his father and instead treating him as an individual, something which his father's regime would not have done if the positions had been reversed. I hope you found this video useful. I'm doing more along similar lines, so please feel free to subscribe. In the meantime, in bocca al lupo.